This series opens up in the year 2099, a man named Wilf is sitting on the bench. He is given company by a young girl called Elida. Wolf is concerned with her and asks if she got herself in any mess. Apparently, she has saved a wolf a long time ago, and she also tells him that now she is on a mission to save the world. She puts her hand on the wolf's cheek and says goodbye to him, and is lost in her imagination. Then the series cut us back to the year 2032 at Blue Ride Mountains. We are introduced to a young girl named Flynn. She gives coffee to her blind mother who has recently lost her eyesight. And while giving her medicine she finds some pills missing. She gives the last pills to her mother and goes after her brother, named Burton to ask about them. He has only got $1000 which can only buy one pill, so he asks her to help him to increase the level in the game. After winning the game and increasing the level, she heads out to town and withdraws some cash, and goes directly to her work at the print shop. Shortly, co-workers show her the package that is for Burton. Inside the box, there is a gadget for the game that directly came from Columbia. Later that night, when she asks about the gadget, Burton admits that the company asked him to beta test it, for crossing level 100 on the game. The fact is that Flynn, not him, was responsible for that. Burton cleverly lures Flynn's by claiming that, they can earn a lucrative amount if they pass the level. Flynn becomes ready to give a shot as she is good at this game. Now, she is inside the sim and a voice that is commanding her inside her head through the device. This game is like the real world, she can feel everything. With the warning tone, the voice tells her she can feel everything from pleasure to pain inside the game. To claim her urn, she needs to complete every task the voice asks for. The speaker directs her to an elegant dinner party inside Buckingham Palace, hosted by a reputed organization called Research Institute. As asked by the voice, to convince her to take him home, Flynn in Burton's body ultimately convinces her to do as asked. As they depart and are about to get inside the car, the voice informs her that the driver robot is programmed to attack him. Well with that information, she is cautious now. As commanded by voice, she takes out a glass ampoule and releases it near Mariel's nose. After Mariel passes out, the robot attacks her. They both fights and luckily she knocks the robot out. Then she drives the car to some mysterious place where he finds a woman standing there. This woman is the voice who has been guiding her and informs her they will continue from the same level and disappear. When Flynn exits the simulation, she gushes about just how realistic this feels. When she stands up, she gets a little dizzy and nauseous yet chooses to go grab her mother's pills. Afterward, she meets up with the men and asks for medicine. Damn this world is so expensive to live in, it cost grand for a single pill. Men deny giving her the pill claiming the price of the pill has increased and her money is not enough. The disabled man named Connor comes out from the bar in his mono wheel and threatens them to give what she is asking. Though Connor is disabled, these men become terrified and give her a pill. Who is this man? Why they were afraid? Stay tuned to find it out. They both head home back while other men head back to the bar to meet an old man. An old man is not happy with them for selling just one pill to Flynn, and also humiliates them for being chicken heart in front of Connor. At home, Flynn finds Burton in pain and some strange sensation is going over his body. His whole body has some kinds of marks carved into his skin, these marks are glowing and, obviously they are causing pain. The next morning, while washing her mother's hair, her mother informs her that Burton has been giving her his pills, to cope with the pain. Afterward, in Burton's trailer, Flynn apologizes for suspecting him of stealing the pills. She again becomes ready to go inside the sim. She enters she finds herself in a surgery room, they take out one of her eyes and replace it with Moraine's. When she first opens up her eyes, she is in a car, seated with the woman. The woman leads her to a building and by using her new eyes, they get inside. They arrive in a room with an upside down pyramid hanging. The woman orders to put his own eye, not Marion in the scanner. And when he does, the laser strikes him hard and he pulls himself away in pain but the woman forces her head forward. Out of nowhere a man shows up, the woman instructs her to kill him as the man is there to kill them. Flynn makes an attempt, but the man binds her wrists behind her back. When woman tries to attack him, he fires her with sonic weapons that harm the organs. Flynn reaches for her hand, and witnesses the skin peel away, showing a robot arm beneath. She somehow manages to help the woman escape, however the man points the gun at Flynn. Flynn awakens and is outside of the sim, and promises herself never to enter into sim again. The following day, her friend Billy and visits her and tries to cheer her up. Flynn tells her everything about the game and states that it is a realistic world where she possesses a robot body. Meanwhile, remember Will from the very beginning calls her and warns her to be inside the sim otherwise, she is going to be in danger. But she ends the call. Somewhere, a police officer detects two strange cars and follows them, however, they soon vanish. He then stops the car but out of nowhere, a man shows up pointing a gun at him. 
and asks to stand in the middle of the road. Some strange invisible things hit the policeman and kills him. Well, the invisible force turns out to be car that the policeman was chasing. Flynn is about to close the shop, but suddenly light starts to flicker and through the machine around Wolf again warns her that, her life is in danger as there is a bounty of $9 million on her and her family's heads. He also urges her to sign in so that he can guide her, otherwise he cannot help her. Flynn rushes back to her home and informs Burton about the incident. Initially, they all laugh at her but when they fly a drone to check it out, they see some unusual activity. And while zooming, they find a group of suspicious people approaching them to hunt them. After finding this, Burton asks Flynn to take her mother into the basement, then quickly starts to connect themself. As they start connecting, the marks on the hands glow, allowing them to see the drone live visually. Burton and his friends quickly grab the gun and begin to shoot at those mercenaries. While this is going on, Flynn tries to wake her mother but doesn't wake up. She then rushes to the basement and hides there, but soon one of the mercenaries comes and starts searching for her. She outsmarts him and knocks the man out. The man soon wakes up and is about to shoot her, but Burton shoots at him from the distance and saves her. They find two of the mercenaries are still alive and while searching for them, mercenaries start to fire at them. Burton and his friends are almost out of ammo, thanks to Connor, who arrives just in time and rescues them. Meanwhile, Wilf is having a dream. He recalls approaching Alita on behalf of his employer. He informs her that his employer needs information about the research institute, where she is currently employed. Elita is doubtful. Wolf wants to know if she is happy. He wakes up from a call from his employer, Lev Zubov, and tells him the whole situation of Flynn. He then asks the wolf to come over right away to make Flynn inside the game, and further adds that he has made a peripheral for Flynn, as she is their only hope to find Elita. Back with Flynn, Burton asks Flynn to log in back to the game as they need more intel. Inside the game, she finds herself in her own body in the year 2099. Wolf is waiting for her and introduces himself. He explains to Flynn that this is not a simulation, but rather the future. Quantum tunneling enables her to exist in this body. He takes her to Trafalgar Square, where she admires the city's architecture and massive monuments. He shows her a newspaper with her mother's article of death from four weeks, from that day in Flynn's timeline to demonstrate that this is the future. And also they have the cure for her mother's gliomas and have already wired the money to the pharmacy in her town. And in return, she must help him to find Elita. After this, she is out of sim and head directly to pharmacy to check it out. Well it's actually the true, she gets the medicine and gives it to her mother. Her mother already knew about her glioma and was hiding from her. However, Tommy notices what appears to be a coffee cup floating in the air. He pokes around and eventually comes across a car disguised in some way. While his friends bury the attacker's bodies, Flynn tells Burton about their mother's medication. Burton is furious for falling in Wolf's trap and urges that he cannot be trusted. When Burton wants to join her in Sim, she rejects him saying she needs him here in the real world to fight, if anything goes off. Then she logs in Sim and finds herself in Notting Hill with Leviticus. Wolf is also there and introduces her to Ash, and Ashen, who makes two world connected. Flynn also learns that her body is controlled by some AI. They further adds that every time when they connect with the past, it makes a similar timeline known as Stub, creating a pint of separation between the two worlds. Elita was working for them to lead them into Research Institute. Then Flynn wants to know about what happened to her and her family in the timeline, but they don't answer her. Wolf promises to tell her everything in the right time. In London, Lev advises Wilf to be patient with Flynn. When Wilf questions Lev about why he intends entry to Flynn's world, he remains untruthful. Flynn informs Burton that people from the future will assist them and will begin by granting them $250,000. And they receive it in the form of a jackpot, won by their cousin in the behalf of them. After that, Flynn suggests to Burton that he to include Connor's assistance as well. Knowing the disability, Burton hesitates first but later decides to visit him. Flynn heads back to home while Burton goes to meet Connor. As usual Connor is drunk. Burton wakes him up and starts to talk about Connor past. Connor tells him that one of attackers during last encounter saw him, looking at his condition, they let him go. Burton then knowledge him about what is going on and wonders if he can join them but must be sober during the mission. Connor takes the last sip and pass out before he could answer. Meanwhile, when Corbell Pickett is going to have a good time with young lady inside a sim, the man shows up there and intervenes. He is the same man violently assaulted Elita and Flynn. The mission is clear, the man offers him $10 million to kill Flynn and Burton. Corbell couldn't believe it and exit the sim. At Flynn house, she opened her laptop and tries to find any information connecting to Meladro's cold iron or Wilf, but couldn't find any. In doing so, suddenly she senses that she is not able to move her one hand from mouse, 
then she eventually manages to take it off by her another hand. The hand again becomes normal. Later that night Connor receives a message informing him that he has received $2.5 million. On the other hand, Flynn wakes up in the middle of night. As she goes downstairs she finds her mother walking in the kitchen. Flynn couldn't believe her eyes. Her mother tells her that she was searching for food in the kitchen as she was hungry. This means her vision are back, she can see now. Thank to that medicine. Part 1 ends here.